welcome to another low-tech <coughs> punctuation lesson. Uh, today, I want to be talking about dashes and parentheses. As we shall see, dashes and parentheses are pretty similar to one another, but dashes are more emphatic. So a dash is a long horizontal mark, twice the length of a hyphen. Uh, in fact, uh, traditionally on typewriters, a dash was two hyphens. And in most modern word processors, if you type two hyphens, the word processor will automatically turn that into a dash. Basic rule of thumb, dashes go between words, like this. Hey, Billy, look at me. Okay, again, for emphasis, but between words, whereas hyphens go inside words. Uh, sometimes we see them, for example, in compound words like merry-go-round, uh, people's names, editor-in-chief, words like that. Also, dashes are emphatic. Um, some ways you can look at them as uh, emphatic parentheses. Uh, and in most cases, to be effective, dashes, like exclamation points, should not be overused. Now, uh, there are maybe some exceptions to that, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Dashes indicate an abrupt change of thought. Okay, for example, uh, Jesus said, oh, are you saved uh, that he was the light of the world? Okay, kind of interrupts uh, the train of thought with something new coming in. Um, <clears throat> Now, occasionally you will come across writings where there are lots of dashes, and usually it's because the speaker or the narrator has abrupt changes of thought. Um, one of my favorite short stories is Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart. Uh, if you've ever read that, the, the narrator is a murderer, and you know, begins by saying, sane? You think I'm insane? I'm perfectly sane. Uh, and... Uh, and there are a lot of dashes because as he's telling the story, he abruptly changes his thought frequently, which kind of indicates that maybe his mind is not operating on a smooth track, if you know what I mean. So sometimes it can be affected that way. Um, and then uh, a lot of times they're used to set off a clause or phrase, sometimes even a single word, for emphasis or dramatic effect. Um, punctuation marks can be confusing. Commas, dashes, hyphens, colons. Um, okay, this is set off for emphasis. Um, you know, con considering uh, this really isn't a positive, uh, you could uh, introduce it by a, a colon. Uh, you might even possibly want to introduce it by a comma, but you know, the dash makes uh, more emphasis. And sometimes it's done for dramatic effect uh, when you write. You know, may we introduce to you the one and only Billy Shears, and uh, you uh, set off that uh, final phrase with a, a uh, dash just to uh, kind of show that uh, this is being emphatic. Now, uh, sometimes we use dashes to set off modifiers, uh, particularly uh, non-restrictive modifiers. Now, normally we use commas. However, non-restrictive or uh, restrictive modifiers and positives can be set off by dash with dashes for emphasis or if the modifiers contain commas or other punctuation that could confuse the reader. So uh, here is an example of uh, an appositive set off by a dash. And this is for emphasis. His bracket was uncanny. Nine of the first ten upsets. Ah, you know, just, that's really unusual. And so you, um, you know, set that off by a dash rather than just, you know, say, a, a comma or a colon. Um, sometimes uh, we use dashes if the modifier, the positive or something, has commas in it. Some expensive films, Heaven's Gates, for example, have been big flops. Uh, if a person's reading that, they, they kind of see the two things set off by commas. It's a little confusing. Is that a series or what is it? Whereas if you set off the appositive with the dashes and then, you know, the commas, you know, inside the dashes, that makes it uh, much clearer for the reader. Um, and also, uh, kind of a rule of thumb, too, that if there is a, a 
modifier and a positive that's fairly long. Uh, for and this, you know, this is a good example of one. Uh, then um, dashes uh, just set it off more clearly, and it's easier for the reader to use. You know, their coach, who claimed that their team was team was no underdog and should have been seated higher, told them they could win it. You know, and uh, really, that uh, a positive is longer than the rest of the sentence. And, um, you know, setting it off by dashes just makes the whole sentence uh, easier to read, and you know, helps it helps that uh, stand out a little bit more. Now, uh, sometimes uh, instead of using quotation marks, some writers introduce a quotation with a, with a dash at the beginning of a new paragraph, at the beginning of a new speaker. Um, uh, this is standard in some languages, uh, and occasionally you see it uh, in English. Uh, here, you know, here's an example. You know, uh, hello, Dan. How are you? Fine. And you? Yep, no complaints. But it kind of shows us there's a dialogue, and the uh, line introduced by the dash shows shows us there's a change of speaker. Again, less common in English. Usually, we just use quotation marks, but you see this occasionally. It's funny. Just recently. I was reading a book that um, was, was a narrative, it was a novel, and uh, the dialogue that took place in the present while the novel was unfolding was done the usual way in English with quotation marks, but there were some flashbacks where one of the characters was thinking back to something that happened earlier, and uh, then those, that person's thoughts uh, the dialogues were done with the dashes to kind of make a, a, a distinction there. Um, and it probably was, in the long run, uh, helpful to the reader to do it that way. But uh, you do sometimes see this uh, in um, dialogue. Uh, and uh, this, in English anyhow, is normally the only time that a dash would begin a line. Uh, so. Um, now, parentheses set off material not essential to the meaning of the text. They're used for asides and explanations. Uh, and uh, also, you can have more than one sentence inside uh, parentheses, which is difficult to do with other, uh, in fact, it's pretty much impossible to follow uh, with other punctuation marks other than uh, quotation marks. Um, and so. Uh, we'll see some examples of this. Um, okay, here, here's an example of good use of parentheses. He had to go through the usual process to get his bus driver's license. And then in parentheses, police and FBI check, reference check, motor vehicle check, written exam, medical test, and driving test. Okay, fairly long list in parentheses, though, because it says it's the usual procedure. There's nothing emphatic about that. Uh, there's no reason really to set it off by... Uh, a dash or even a colon, um, so uh, it's, and it's additional information. So that this is the kind of thing that uh, parentheses uh, are often used for. Um, and uh, yeah, as I explained here, yeah, uh, because the sentence says the usual process, uh, probably no need to be emphatic. Okay, parentheses are used around numbers showing dates, usually birth dates and things like that inserted figures or numbers or letters in an itemized series, such as a series of steps. So uh, here's an example, Joshua Chamberlain, 1829 to uh, 1914. A lot of times, you know, person's dates uh, will be inserted in parentheses, tells us, you know, he's born in 1829, died in uh, 1914. Um, uh, sometimes we do that to insert figures. Uh, again, especially if it's not particularly emphatic, just additional information. The Senate vote was very close, 50 to 48, okay. Um, the, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we put parentheses around, in other words, on both sides of uh, a number or letter uh, in a series, if we're numbering things, we're make, uh, doing steps or things like that. So to make New England clam chowder, get the following items. One, quahogs, two, cream, three, potatoes, four, onions. Okay? Um, and, you know, those would go uh, inside parentheses. Or uh, sometimes letters in a series, you would do the same thing. 
Uh, you see this a lot of times with multiple choice tests. In fact, if you think about it, this is the way uh, the SAT does their multiple choice tests with the parentheses. What was Hamlet's mother's name? Ophelia? B, Beatrice, C, Gertrude, or D, Helena? I'm not going to tell you the answer. You probably should know that, right? Okay, um, a single parenthesis uh, is used in uh, specific divisions of certain types of formal outlines. Here is a, uh, a formal outline, um, and you know when you study outlines, you may have studied these divisions. Uh, you start with a Roman numeral, then a capital letter, then a uh, you know, regular Arabic numeral, then lowercase letter, and then if you have even narrower divisions, uh, then you would have uh, the number followed by a closed parenthesis and even more narrow division, um, a lowercase letter followed by a closed parenthesis. Uh, I usually tell my students, uh, unless they're writing a really long paper, that uh, you probably don't need probably don't need the divisions where you use the uh, single parenthesis because those are very specific, but. You know, that, that's how you do it if you do have uh, an outline like this. Okay, now, when a parenthetical phrase or sentence interrupts the middle of a sentence, you do not capitalize the first letter inside the parenthesis unless, of course, the word is a proper noun, a proper adjective. So, you know, we saw Rosie at Spoonbill. They have exquisite pink color. You put that in parentheses. Uh, you know, on our trip to Texas, going to insert that. Uh, you might want to for a, additional information uh, that's uh, you know, not directly related to the uh, rest of the text. Now, there are some exceptions. Uh, <clears throat> if the first letter in a parenthetical question or a parenthetical exclamation is, according to most uh, authorities, always capitalized. So, we saw brown pelicans. Have you ever seen one? Along the shore there. Okay, again, that is a question inserted in parentheses. So, the first letter of that is capitalized. And that's also true of uh, exclamations. Um, we took a trip to Texas. It's a big state. There were many brown pelicans. Now, in this case, uh, the uh, I and it would be capitalized anyhow because the parenthetical expression is outside two sentences. Okay, so a parenthetical sentence that goes between two sentences of text uses both an initial capital letter and an end mark inside the parentheses. Okay, so this first example would be incorrect. Uh, capital letter, not lowercase letter, and the end mark, uh, even a period, would go inside the closing parenthesis. Okay, similarly, uh, if a sentence containing a parenthetical expression uh, uh, that um, <clears throat> you always have the punctuation that belongs to the main sentence outside the parentheses. So, if you said it was a real heat wave and you have this parenthetical expression, five days over a hundred, okay, that's the end of the sentence, then you, your closing punctuation mark would go at the end of the sentence after the closing parenthesis. Uh, another example, uh, in this case, uh, it's um, <clears throat> parenthetical uh, expression in a series we saw Jerry, Ed, Tom's brother, and Julius there last night, okay? Tom's brother explains, you know, who Ed is. Me and my beard talking to someone who knows Ed or, I mean, knows, yeah, or knows Tom or something like that. So it's parenthetical, but the, the comma would go after the closing parenthesis. So, uh, really pretty simple, straightforward rules for the use of dashes and parentheses. And again, I hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in class. If you're not in the class, then you can always go to the contact page at englishplus.com.
and someone there uh, will be happy to answer your question. Thank you very much.